some of the rest staff to send a response by the to the residents discuss the proposed session. And the leader is seconded to move by Councilor Buckwell, seconded by Councilor Robinson. Councilor Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Burke? Yes. Councilor Evan Schoenfeld? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. And then that's the very thank you. Item 3.4, I have a resolution that staff implements the staff appreciation as directed by council in closed session. And then we have a seconder, moved by Councilor Burns, seconded by Councilor Robinson. Councilor Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Burns? Yes. Councilor Evan Schoenfeld? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. All right, yes, that's great. Thank you. So back to our agenda and for the declaration of pecuniary interest and in general nature thereof. Seeing none, then we will move to item five, which is the third address. We move into September with preparing for our children to return to school. We know that this will be a new experience for all our parents, staff, and students as we navigate challenges that COVID-19 has created. Same time, we can gain some reassurance from the fact that Medford County has resolved all of our positive COVID cases. I stand corrected because we had a new one in our prior. We must remain diligent in our efforts to wear masks in public space, public spaces where physical distancing is impossible, especially as we will soon be entering our flu season. Once again, on behalf of Council, I want to thank our staff and recognize the excellent effort they have demonstrated in their flexibility and cooperation adapted to their constantly changing workplace requirements brought on by COVID. While some of the restrictions have been lifted, cleaning, hand washing, and masking are becoming the new normal in their daily interactions. In spite of the challenges, our staff has managed to complete their assignments, developing into a cohesive team to move our municipality forward. Council has committed to advancing the development of the local trail, engaging in discussions with our neighboring municipalities, on development opportunities and building a relationship with the Elementary District Washington. A strategic plan is nearing completion, and we're looking forward to a presentation by PGT Solutions in September. PGT Solutions has facilitated the demonstration of an asset management software program, which can integrate with our budget and finance. Staff has finalized the contract for the purchase of the meeting management program that will improve the efficiency of meeting preparation improve communication and provide easier access to information. Work is progressing on the renovations and upgrades to our Golden Lake Fire Hall to address the health and safety concerns of our volunteers. This work has been completed by our fire department volunteers who have contributed approximately 250 hours of labor to the project to date. This equals, equates to more than $5,500 in saved labor costs. That is my report. I have a resolution that the September 1st, 2020 mayor's address be accepted as presented. And then we have a second moved by Councilor Burns, seconded by Councilor Robinson. Councilor Buckle? Yes. Councilor Burns? Yes. Councilor Reggie Polko? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. And yes, that's carried. Thank you very much. In our resolution, the council accepts the August 18, 2020 regular meeting minutes. Are there any, uh, can I get a move and a second? Moved by Councilor Reggie Polko, seconded by Councilor Robinson. Are there any additions, corrections, or amendments? Seeing none, then we accept those as presented in our August 18, 2020 public meeting minutes as presented. Any additions, corrections, or omissions? Seeing none, as presented. Council Buckhall? Yes. Council Burke? Yes. Council Rasmussenko? Yes. Council Robinson? Yes. Uh, yes, that's carried. Thank you. We have no delegations, I, so we'll move the reports. Item 8.1, a resolution that council accept 
the public works report as presented. And we're going to move into secondary, moved by Councilor Burton, seconded by Councilor Buckle. And I'll just ask staff to speak to the report. Okay. So um, this is my acting for public works director, but the, the uh, truck that we have planned to um, take out of service themselves. And we found that one of the trucks in service was actually in lovely condition when the truck was selling. So what we propose to do is to exchange the trucks and use the, the one that we're going to sell as a backup for the winter to the truck and then the spring truck. That's the plan. Um, the one truck has holes brought right into the box of the sander and um, Get uh, floppy fenders, which were repaired, but they're still going to be floppy and going to be some major mechanical work to do as much. So we just decided that the other truck is in far better condition. And it's good that we have that type of um, Roadside cutting, which we're doing, we're continuing it. We're down to one more out with the students on for that. Um, patching is ongoing, they were patching today. Uh, our sand and uh, salt stockpiling is almost complete here, and we'll be moving to the old lake next week, not uh, this week. Uh, there's a few culverts that they're repairing, um, and some road work to continue. We're still doing the washrooms at Golden Lake and Rosa Bishop, and we plan to do the weekend there until Thanksgiving, and that is covered under our COVID um, expenses. Because it's something we would normally have to do to have an open and close and do that community. Uh, and we plan to have one student stay in place for that sort of cleaning those hours because it's um, pretty close. Uh, just one thing that I didn't put the road repair is like the, this is for the holidays with staff, but the Shyman Road is going to get some overlay probably done. So we plan to do it in October, but then we know that's going to happen. The public acting public works coordinator told me today that he's just waiting for staff to come back from all from all day next week in the project. Council Burke, do you have any questions? How does it work on Royal Pines? Uh, Royal Pines, I didn't get an update for this meeting from Greenwood, but I have no issue really with Greenwood and the other communities. Um, if it gets to the point, and I just talked to Greenwood, told me they would get it done at the end of the summer, and I still think they're still in summer. If they can't do it by Thanksgiving, then there's no point in doing it. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll touch base with Ken to get a sort of timeline for next meeting. Thank you. This time, I have to relate to public works. Um, any idea what's going to happen to the trucks that go light because the fire department took over that one day? What's going to happen when we talk about it going so, um the acting public works coordinator and myself are being more on the talk about what we can do as far as the building goes but we have a plan to be able to accommodate the truck here uh the sidewalk machine is going to be a little bit more difficult for we're working on that okay thank you seeing no other comments or questions i'll call for the vote council buckle yes council burns yes council reggie Chumpo. yes council robinson yes Item eight point two. I have a resolution that council authorizes the following project or projects with a cost not to exceed eighteen thousand. Uh, can I get a mover and a seconder to bring forward the discussion? Moved by Council Buckwall, seconded by Council Robinson. And by the last staff, we uh, give us a little background. So, um, when we wrote the report, we believe that we have between twelve and eighteen thousand dollars remaining to build a really good deal with our main street grant. Uh, but today, we um, reviewed a couple of applications that we think can go through. That's going to leave us with about ten thousand dollars available um, to do as a residual. So, our shopping list that we put in there for council. Uh, limits what we can do in ten thousand dollars. So what we suggested is the fire department 
I was taking one of the bays out and, and just put my wall down. It would be easy to get our sign, our electronic sign put up there. Um, it also would pay for the fire rest to go to that building, which is in that grant, and um, maybe a little bit of facade um, improvements. And we would try within that money to take a building um, at the um, Eden Bill end of the township, a commercial building, and put a sign on it on the front. And I have you know, that's a council discussion as to where you'd like to see that. Um, but it would be easy to do that and within, within the $10,000. And the $10,000 would be to facilitate some facade um, on the fire department plus the $7,000 for the sign. Um, the other thing that we also we suggested was a to do a um, deck on the bridge equipment. That was ten thousand dollars or five thousand dollars short on that one. That was completely dependent on no labor and no cost. Uh, another suggestion for ten thousand dollars was to putting a, a sign or electronic sign in Rankin. And I know that the uh, Rankin was in trust with community group was in trust with their having a, having a sign, but we've had no discussion with the suggestion of council. Uh, and then the fifteen thousand dollars for beautification of the fire hall that was to do a complete facade. I would suggest that we would look at a few thousand dollars just to improve the blank wall thing that they, the fire department did when they closed off that bay. Um, and then there would be another one suggestion as a community garden at the Lake uh, Community Center. So this was a, a big community garden to, to both from. Um, a floral and um, community pods for growing vegetables. But again, with those 18,000 dollars we can't we can't recommend that one. So staff's recommendation would be to do the left on side. That's right. So so we were going to put an electronic sign up somewhere in Golden Lake anyway, right? So would this be a second electronic sign? So what we're having is the issue with the um MCO. MTO to get something through. Right. And we're also anticipating that something happened to, to the four way at Golden Lake, right. which may restrict our ability to put a sign. So, in the, in the guidelines and regulations, it states that any sign put up that can be seen 400 meters from a highway, they may request um, a permit and they may not. Um, because of the purpose of the sign, in fact, it's on fireball and displaying township information. We may not even have to do a permit. So we're, we're working on that right now. And we have a timeline of October 31st to use the funding. So we do have the sign. We just haven't put it up. Right? We just we haven't put it up. So our sign is double sided. That's why we have two signs. So how far is it from, let's say, the garage where we go on to the highway? It's more than 85 meters from the center. 85 okay. feet from so would it, would it be like visible, like as I'm driving by, do you to read the message on? Or not? It's a four-way sign. It's, it's actually very big. I'm just trying to picture it, how mm -hmm. visible. So at 80 kilometers an hour, it would be a good sign to read. But when the speed limit is 50, it would be something that could be read. Also, there is quite a, a parade of uh, people that get their mail that go into the post office and most of the other end. I know the council members <laughs> are smiling there because that's the way that's the right. So people would, just wait out. <laughs> people would get to see that. And once they get used to where the sign is, then it would become very popular. Um, we're just suggesting that that's the easiest route right now to get a sign on the wall. Saturday morning at the intersection will be this much. But so so where would the sign be facing? So here's the highway. And here's the fire department, this side and that side. It's not going on this end. I'm assuming where the front door came out. Where the door came out. Came out. So, yeah. last day. so the closest fire hall bay to the post office, right. that door is gone. That will open close in. So we're not doing it on the end. This would no, be it would be on where the door is. Is it facing the highway? Is it facing the highway? Because I'm still trying to think like how visible it would be when it was gone. Because I look at the one at Opiongo, let's say, and we're driving by. I think that one. I mean, you're, I guess you're closer to it as you're driving than this one would be at the fire hall. The biggest issue with putting on the fire hall wall is that it's not going to be sticking out from the wall for people to see, like the one that will be on or the one that will be on the wall. Mm -hmm. That's the municipal office. It's actually going to be on the wall. 
That's that's the only downside to it. It is going to reduce visibility. Um, from my perspective, for what it's going to cost to put there, so we already have the sign, right? And it's a matter of running the internet into it wirelessly so that we can get an update remotely. A sign sitting in a box and doing this no good. Mm -hmm. Nothing else is the first step. But I still have, I think it still defeats the purpose that it's on a wall where it's not getting the visibility that we anticipated. That's what I have an issue with. So I recognize what you're saying, but the game plan is for it to be visible to people going back and forth. 90% um, of everyone driving is not going to be wanting to look at the fire hall. If, it, if it's if it's a lit sign, it'll draw it'll draw more attention to, right? As opposed to like the static sign that we have there now, we just go and change it. But the one thing with the static sign is, though, if I'm coming, let's say to the four corners, I just look and I see it, right? Yeah. If I'm coming to the four corners now, it's on the the front or whatever of the the fire hall. I'm definitely not going to see it. Like you have to turn right to go up to to Deacon to see it. Yeah. You're going on the on the lake Dory. That makes it um, if you're coming to the door across, you're not going to see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, if I could suggest to council, if we put it on the firewall, you know, if we put both signs on the firewall, which we could do and have a bigger, wider message so that's 15 feet wide, we can get the complete funding and we don't give any money back to the funding agency. Um, it doesn't mean you can't continue with that other application and move it. But what it would do, and it'd be a good investment, it would pay for the wireless to the fire hall, which they need right now anyway. It would pay for the electrical connection, and it would not stop you in the future from taking that sign down and putting it where you want to put the sign. Um, it would be a good fix for this year to get something up, and we will continue with the other application if the council were to agree to that. And in that case, we wouldn't look for a certain location to use the sign up there so we know what we're going on. One location with both signs, is that the thing? If we can incorporate both signs, we would do that. Um, but this would be, if we get the one sign up, we're, we're going to be able to take advantage of the funding. I, I, yeah, I get what you're trying to say. You don't want to lose the funding, mm -hmm. so you don't want to lose the money. But I get what Maria is saying too, in that. The intention was for it to be visible on both sides, close to the four corners, so it was easily seen by everybody. So it means like, in a way, we're not doing what we asked, but we don't want to lose the money, so we're doing a second guess. Where, where, where I'm back to thinking, a sign at the Rankin Community Center would be great because it is two sided, and you're seeing it coming and going. That's about and we have funds set aside to install the first stop, correct? Through the grant. So we, we have the ability to do this. The, the grant wasn't for the whole fund. This allows us to use this this money. This money can be given. You have to give some back. So you're not losing anything to, to put it up temporarily. And we, and we currently have a single two sided sign. We have two. Or through single. single. So we could use them as a together sign or use them separately. What what would the cost be to get a third one, a third single, and do a golden light candid ranking? Would that fit into our funding there? So the ranking, and and what I put, I put a, a number there for ranking, ten thousand dollars. That would be to put one on the wall of the building. Uh, Rankin already has a um, estimate that's far more than, than twenty thousand dollars to develop by the sign up, and then we're still into the process of going through a deal, which is almost the same. Council Roman, Council Roman, this might be a redundant question, but is there a way for the sign not to be on the wall at the final that the city has? And be that many meters away that we don't need a permit. Mm -hmm. I, I think but, um, attached to the wall, attached to the building, but uh, 
you'd have to put a roof over it because the smoke of the roof the snow comes off there. Mm -hmm. Uh, that I, I don't think I don't think the, 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 the one other suggestion is take both signs and put one on the fire hall and put the other one on the entire house. And then you have the same message in two places at the same time. Maybe it seems in two different directions. See, uh, I would feel better about that. Because the people coming to the four corners would see it, mm -hmm. right? And then you're not having to go through the permit, which seems to be taking us years to do. We don't need no permit for that, too. Mm -hmm. Because it's okay. it, would, it, would, it would be the same as the fire The only other thing, too, is like, what if you did something more with Melissa Bishop Park? I mean, upgrades to the cottage, more playground equipment. Well, well, there's some play beyond equipment, like the swing and the spinner kind of have to be oriented differently so you can use the spinner with the swings and stuff like that. And we did talk about some adult jungle gym stuff, which is something that maybe you can't get everything together by October the 31st. And it's the doable things. Um, and it's also funding on the sign. We lose funding if we can't get something. Where where would you put it on the full stop this side or the you have that that's news so we have to look what have we do? Where could you put it? On the step probably. Um, we don't have room on both on the lake road side, lake road side, so you'd have to put it mm -hmm. where the windows are too, and then you go and put it at an oddball height. You could probably get it between two windows. Two windows facing facing or you might get it between two and eight feet, I'm not sure. But that'd be about the only spot right there. And even then, you're still not going to see it from like really road. You're only going to see it yeah, from yeah. the highway. And you'll kind of see it when you're coming up from the Quaquagon. I'm not sure what your sight lines are like there. It would catch your eye, but it's probably distant when you come. I like the idea of the fire hall, and maybe one of the for now. The signs are just sitting there, not doing anything. They just got them up. What if, what about the fire hall on one outside? You don't know. For people to come after, try to come after hours. I know the visibility is not as good as it is on the main travel route. Just get them up. But we really don't have anything out here either. No. I mean, it's too bad we couldn't put something on the drugstore. You know, or something on. Well, they got a section of the wall. They I know that's what But they tell us for the gas station, right? You know what I mean? Where the gas station is. You know, or right. even. Well, I, I know. The, I know the perfect place. For that. The corner of the old snowbird building. And that's what I was going to say. One on this corner, one on this corner, with the same message. Yeah, and I mean they're using that as a food bank now, right? But I mean, I can't see a private place granting us the use to put on that public side. No, here, if we were putting it here, the most visible location would be where a north upland sign is on the side of the um stand of the volunteer. Make the sign there, but that's where you'd see it the farther down the road. Yeah, it's still, but I'm still thinking that, like, but where would you put it in the window? Well, you've got the, the two big businesses and the country uh, people and uh, food land. So, well, country people, food land, and fry. Yeah. Right. Because country people and fry have signposts outside that have power going in the for lighting. So, your insulation costs, yeah, it's getting having to do with the fan. Okay. And we're still asking a public, a private you know, yeah, entity yeah. with public funds. Yes. Again, yeah, it could be somewhere. If we did the fire hall this year and you put it out here this year, if there are permanent mounts that they would be, then we're covered for the funding. So we need to do the other controller because the sign was set up with the, the dual sign, you got a, a other controller. So we need to spend that $7,000. But if we did that, there's not much infrastructure for this sign other than the fact that we want the, the controller. 
then you have the ability to move it someplace else thanks to the people. And we're not putting money back. Yeah, people move. Yeah, there's a power run with the no issue of it before you have power in the shed, right? Yeah, so you do tell them pretty easily. So the power run would be no issue here. You're putting it on the wall of the fire hall, there's no issue with power there either. So you've got the least installation costs in the short term. So that we can and get because we, we've been dealing with these signs for a few years now. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to see them up somewhere, even if even if it's interim, until we can you know get the permits and put it where we'd like to have it. And I, I would say definitely continue with that. Uh, yeah. My biggest concern is I know interim and final. That's just what you're doing. But anyway, I, I agree, you still have to use them. You should use the money. I don't think it's the best solution, but I guess it's really using the money. Well, I'll agree with the resolution in the county that council authorizes the following program with the cost not to exceed the amount of ten thousand not eighteen to install an electronic sign on the purchase of trans signs in the Illinois Fire Department building and install a second sign at Sean Woods. Yeah, it's too bad to think you want Sean Woods. Sean Woods Municipal. Sean Woods Woods. There's a lot of people using it. So the second sign is Charles with blocks. Council Buckle? Yes. Council Bird? Yes. Council Ryder Funko? Yes. Council Robinson? Yes. And that's that. Very thank you. Item 8.3, we have a resolution that council accepts the voters' bill report and redirects the committee to act as a project committee for the purpose of constructing the multi use inclusive trail between Milton Road and Burlitz Road. And further, the first order of business for the committee is to provide council with a moving forward report. And I got a move and a second. It looks like Council Bird seconded by Council Robinson. Comments, questions? Like, first of all, um, we approved ten thousand dollars, and I know it's here in the minutes, but somehow the paper wrote twenty thousand. So, I did have a number of reps now, maybe five, that said, What are you doing? How are you spending twenty thousand dollars? So, I don't know if we can print that up. Yeah, I'm just saying that you're the best. Are we good? Okay, great. And the other thing too is, do we have to? Because there is a swampy part. Do we need an environmental study? That's a concern of mine. So that's something that will come back to council if we're going to have, have that. Okay. Um, basically, all this is is, is taking the committee into doing what council said to do up to this point, and they're going to come back to council and say, "This is what we think we should do." So basically, mm -hmm. it's a just changing the direction as instead of feasibility, they're just they're working on what council has directed to be done. Any other questions, comments? Council Bucko? Yes. Council Bird? Yes. Council Ryder Bucko? Yes. Council Robinson? Yes. And yes, that's very good. Item 8.4. Our Reverend Council accepts the report of convention and direct staff to review all correspondence and only place new and relevant items in the action line on the agenda and that requests similar to actions previously taken by council uh, to come to the agenda as non-action items. And again, move in a second. Moved by Council Buckwell, seconded by Council Robinson. And I'll just ask staff to maybe explain that a little more. So this report is basically in Sort of in response to the request that we've been getting from other councils to support the resolution. And we're getting a lot of them, but a lot of them are actually the same um, topic. So, what this is, is the, the council's already addressed, uh, we'll say, a, a concern about uh, speed limits or something like that from one council. Then you get up from another council a letter of support. So, when you do a letter of support, you're sending it to the premier, the minister. To our minister, 
to the county board and to the municipality that asked for it. So you generate a lot, a lot of letters. And I think the last council meeting we had 10 that came out of council. So it's a lot of letters to write, but you've already done some of them. So they keep coming back to council because other the 444 municipalities. If somebody has an idea, then they go around and it comes back and more the same way. So this is just taking the ones that are repetitive or have really nothing to do um, with coming to a council meeting, like just leaving something that would mean have to come to council to say I open support or something or or just choose not to. So they would still come as correspondence, but they didn't come as action items. That's a I think that makes sense because we do get, I know the fact we've gotten from different municipalities who want to support for things. If they come still with a non action item and you're aware of them, you can always move it into action if it's something you feel strongly about it. So if it's going to streamline the process, it makes sense to me. But isn't the whole thing so that those different people or those different organizations realize the importance of maybe making a change to, let's say, a speed limit and stuff like that? So now, if we do that, then there's one less person supporting that. Not the order to support it, right? So, so let's say I don't know. I don't think speed limit is wrong. We we address other stuff for it could be like a affordable house, affordable housing or things like that that we support in the past. If one municipality from the York Region Center that we respond to it in the affirmative, yes, we support this, and then another one from the York Region or the Gilded River will ask for the exact same thing for the province. It's more work for us to be able to do something that we've already done. And then we still have the option to support extra work if we choose to. Council hours are that option. If it's a non-action, we can ask the visit to action. Mm -hmm. So it's basically where it would be placed when staff is doing the agenda. And if it's something we really feel strongly about supporting this now is asked to submit a package again. Question uh, just a suggestion to simplify things for, for council when we go through the agenda is maybe you put something in the non-action section, maybe you know, already addressed or similar request or some kind of comment so that we know why it's in the non action, why it would normally be something you might be asked to support. That might make it. Yeah, it some comment. yeah I do like that idea. Because then we know well, why it's in non action be, instead of action. You could say letter was written on September 1st. Yeah, or yeah. you know, already supported or whatever. Mm -hmm. Because again, we do get a lot of them and you know, Some we're not going to remember which one we said we supported, and we get another one now. We've already done it. Staff has access to all that correspondence that we've done. I'm always saying it's important to support other municipalities because we might need the same support somewhere else. Yeah. Um, there's sometimes where it seems that all of the different municipalities are rallying around the same um, topic. Mm -hmm. And there, there definitely is a problem that is taking place. Do you see that in the Sometimes it's easy to see. Okay. Um, and sometimes, you know, there's not added to it. But if, I, I would think that what's happening today with these letters is that some municipal clerks have a lot of time on their hands with the COVID. <laughs> there will be more of those things going on, but some of the very important support. Uh, when we look at, you know, use an example of farm tax credit or something, and if um, Warrington Valley, Send something, and we've already seen it from Durham. Well, the Wrenching Valley is our neighbor. So that's something we probably bring the council back to. But if it was Durham did it, and then St. Thomas did it, well, it's not a relevance to us, other than we supported it the first time. So 
you'll be looking at all those things. And if there's trends that are important, then you would also but you'd be looking at some um, community housing or something, something we don't even have. It really come to our municipality because we don't even we don't even have that that service. See, that's something I would agree with. Like, you know, if we but I mean, even like the farmers not good. I think then we're supporting other farmers, which we have some there. So I would maybe be in favor of that. But maybe an explanation as to why, and then if there's something you felt strongly about, you read it more than like you said, you could go from all that track. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. So I'll reread and I added a sentence to it as well. Council accepts the report as presented and directs staff to review all correspondence and only place new and relevant items in the action line on the agenda. And that request similar to the actions previously taken by council come to the agenda as non action items. And further, that staff notes previous action on the request to the board. Okay, I'll call for the vote. Councilor Bucko? Yes. Councilor Bird? Yes. Councilor Wright and Kelso? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Yes, I believe that's carried. Item 10.122. Uh, oh, item 8.5. There was no COVID update. We're checking this back. Okay. Uh, so we get the correspondence items non action 10.1.2. The council accepts correspondence items 10.1.1 to 10.1.4 as information. So we have been seconded moved by Councilor Byrne, seconded by Councilor Byrne. Okay, so we have questions. Okay, Madam Council Buck. Oh, sorry. Have we already supported the uh, accounting with their VTAC presentation? Yes, we have. We have gone through okay. There's a perfect example. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you. Councilor Burke? Yes. <clears throat> Councilor Wright and Chonko? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yeah. Yes, it's carried. Next question. Don't pay. Yes. Yeah. We, we got that just today, so we put it in there. There's a poster on the wall going out. Okay. Thank you. Item 10.2.1 is uh, an action item from the city of St. Catharines. Whereas the township of North Dakota will report to receive correspondence from the city of St. Catharines. With respect to support for the City of Toronto and the legal challenge of the amendments made under the 184, Section 83, refusal for certain arrears of rent. Be it resolved that the Township of North Oklahoma Wilbur Force hereby supports their resolution passed on August 10th, 2020. Be it further resolved that this resolution be sent to the Premier's office, the Honorable Steve Clark, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, MP Chair of Law, MPP John Antibuski, and the City of St. Catherine's Clerk, Bonnie, and Ms. Fiscal Dunn. I got a move in a second, moved by Councillor Byrne, seconded by Councillor Buckle. Comments or questions? Any none? Councillor Buckle? Yes. Councilor Burke? Yes. Councilor Reggie Ponto? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. And yes, that's very Thank you. Item 10.2.2 Whereas the Township of North Oklahoma Will Report received correspondence from the City of Fort Colburn with respect to endorsement of Bill 164. Protecting Vulnerable Persons in Support of Living Accommodation Act 2019. It is resolved that the Township of North Oklahoma Wilbur Force hereby supports the resolution passed on January 27, 2020. 
be further resolved that this resolution be sent to the Premier's office, the Minister of Government and Consumer Services, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Children, Community and Social Services, and the Minister of Long Term Care. Comments, questions? Seeing none, Councillor Buckle? Yes. Councillor Burke? Yes. Councillor Ricciotto? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. And the rest of the period, thank you. Item 10.2.3 is the need to go native fall magazine advertising. I have a resolution that council advertise in the Discovery the Valley, Discovery of the Discovery the Valley, this fall magazine for the following ad rate. And you see the rates there. And, and it has indicated to me that most of the municipalities are going with the full page ad for the two number five. So I'll just put that out there for council. Can I get a move in a second? Moved by Councillor Buffalo, seconded by Councillor Eddie. Thank you. Thomas. What's five like? I get the idea the outside box of paper for three dollars. I break. You know what that is? More of a block of the week. Yeah, it's like newspaper. I'm not in the office before us. Maybe it's like working with the Canadian Tire and Walmart. So there's some of that in the room? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it, I don't think to stretch, but I would try to put this on my COVID world because this is something to encourage business in the community during this COVID. Um, I would break so we're, we would try to put it down as a four four ninety five dollars instead um, a COVID expense to stretch, but I want to put everything in the right thing. So go with the gloss too. One, I would suggest the the hybrid. Hybrid is full page 395. 395 or 495? No, 395. Hybrid. Councilor Buckle? Yes. Councilor Burke? Yes. Councilor Reginfoto? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Uh, yes, that's great. Uh, bylaws, we have none other than our confirmatory bylaws. No, she won't say we have no reports for committees, upcoming meetings, and unfinished business. So, in unfinished business, we have uh, oh. Dan. Oh. So, I missed 10.2. 10.24. That's going to happen. 10.24. No, we got it. That's what I was at. Sorry. My apologies. So, item 10.24 is the uh, virtual annual general meeting for the uh, Eagan Dome and Victory Seniors. And that's Wednesday, September 23rd at 1 p.m. There's no resolution. That's if Council wants to go away. We have to send uh, a response. Right? Mm -hmm. Are they added as a question? Or do you just need direction? Well, I think you need a sense of those other people. If the council doesn't want to attend, and then the direction staff will be in terms of those people are free to go about it. I'm on the way uh, Council Burke, did you need to go? If, I, if I'm not too busy, I would be. <laughs> it's well, not busy, they need it. I get it from one way or the other. Can I go to school? I don't know. Yeah. Can you go to school? Yeah, you can go to school. Well, no, no, I'm, I'm going to be there anyway because I'm their chair. I am. Now I've got an appointment. So, 
Okay. I can be there. I'll potentially put me on the list and uh, I'll have to confirm with you. And it needs to be, I could do zero B. So back to item 15, 15.1 under unfinished business is the August 18th, 2020 finance report and the response to the questions that were submitted to Daniel. So Daniel, I'll turn that over to you. Sure. So this would uh, be the the actual, which is actually a few days here, so the end of July, no, actually. And uh, the report was certainly not a week. So, so the questions so far I've had um, to do with sales of equipment, where are we on that? So year to date, we haven't done anything except the report of the sale of the truck. Also in the sale of equipment and land revenues was a uh, parcel of land and golden rate. We haven't begun to move on that yet either. Uh, Moving on, question about what's uh, in our legal fees. There's nothing specific in here, that's just a regular amount of legal, numerous legal items that are occurring throughout the year. The admin wages and benefits projections are up over our budget. Uh, council will be familiar with the specific items in that. I think I should really mention it. Um, in terms of municipal all expenses, yes. Both the double the budget, and most of that is COVID related for the extra supplies and whatnot. We're getting not a huge expense, but that is where it's mostly coming out. Uh, fire department hydro. Uh, I run the numbers on this account for a few years, and the budget was 8,000 year to date. We're at the well, it was 1,000 at the end of July, it was a little bit higher now, but it seems like typically we end the year around four and a half thousand, so we should. Take note of that to drop that budget down to make sure we're just not spending whatever we have. Uh, in terms of the question of public works hydro, uh, public works hydro was actually sort of an arbitrary split of the hydro of this building between that end of the building and this end of the building, where it's only one year. So we're just putting it all as a main hydro rather than trying to guess where it goes. Just makes it a little easier on administration. We know what it is. This building. So next year we we move that line all together. Yeah. Okay. And just add on to the new side. Uh, in terms of intersection signs, this was actually uh, the Ministry of Transportation reached out with a new uh, system how they wanted us to pay for our licenses, licenses permits for our signs. We have maybe thirty odd signs, and it's built out by the square footage of the sign. So what we end up doing was going through this new system and the $7,000 we spent is good for five years, the next five years. Um, it's a bit of a nightmare to get through, but we did it and now, by the time it comes up again, it will be again. What signs are there then? Uh, there are all the road signs for private roads, as well as we've got a few for different things like the beacon sign and a couple others that are here again. Not not uh, not anything that would be on buildings. Okay. So just going forward then for five years, we should have not be zero. Okay, we should not. Unless mm -hmm. they find something else. Uh, um, in terms of landfill and uh, recycling, the Shaw Woods Capital was actually budgeted as two roll-off bins this year. Last year we refurbished it. Compactor, and this year we're going to replace two bins, so that's still ongoing. And then the other comment or question was on the uh, new center repairs and maintenance. And um, so far, there's been no real activity. Uh, I think the question of whether that was the bricks on the front and the steps, and it was just right in the old uh, fire extinguisher you know, spot in. So, uh, Maybe go back to just the general 
nature of the report is that uh, the projection was more or less at this point a year balance. Like since the report, we've had the announcement of these COVID findings, which was in no way factored into that uh, 111,000. Uh, so, I mean, $100,000 on your $6 million budget at this point in the year is not a big swing. Let's see where we are here. And just uh, follow up with some other main items, I guess, keep you in the loop. Um, notices coming out of impact for new builds and such is significantly delayed. Uh, they are, the sales are progressing as well as things that report on building certificates, but uh, any requests to require physical examination property is definitely not happening or we're not seeing them as well we're hearing that the uh, the ag report program with the farm tax credit rebate is effectively not moving at all just a question on the, on the farm tax rebate why exactly when you say it's not moving at all what does that mean so uh, typically, uh, certain of your farms require you to uh, be a member of the agriculture program in order to get the discount. Yes. If you were to try and apply new this year, if you already have one, it's probably fine. If it was new this year, you were trying to apply, nothing is happening. Thank you. Appreciate that. Or if you missed some type of a deadline, it's gone. That's not anything. <coughs> Okay, so that uh, our next regular council meeting will be September 13th, 2020, at 7 p.m. And that brings us to item number 17, which is our confirmatory bylaw. That bylaw 2020-74 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council, or that should be uh, September 1st. He read it first and second time to this first day of September 2020. Any comments or questions? Any none? He read it third time and finally passed this first day of September 2020. Council Buckwell? Yes. Council Bird? Yes. Council Reagan Fonkel? Yes. Council Robinson? Yes. And the rest of the areas, thank you. I have a resolution that this regular meeting of council is here to have. 827? Yes, yes. Yeah. And again, over in the second, it's moved by Councilor Bird, second by Councilor Buckwell. Councilor Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Bird? Yes. Councilor Ray Pachonko? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. And the yes. Gary? Thank you. Yeah, you're here. You're leaving us? No, I'm not very far. Pardon? You're not going very far. But you're leaving us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that the first part of the end of our 